Hi everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to Guinea Technology again. So today we are going to talk very interesting topic that is the G scalar, you know, silent authentication process, especially for the GIA, not the GPA. Okay, because the GPA doesn't support this silent authentication process. So first we have to understand what is a silent authentication in the G scalar. Then subsequently we have to understand how it is going to be happen. Okay. So let us start. So as you guys can see topic itself, GIA, G scalar internet access, silent authentication with the client connector, IDP. What is the IDP? That is identity provider, right? Right. So we having the lot of identity provider in the market, very famous, which is like uh, uh, compatible with the G scalar or like that you can say very much usable with the G scalar. That is a Okta. So Okta is one of the identity provider uh right now like azure is also like azure edge also like very famous any other active active services is famous but okta probably will find the more famous while dealing with the g scaler right so how it is going to work and what is the silent authentication process so if we want to understand what is the silent authentication process so we just have to understand what does mean silent authentication first right so just give me one second. all right so here uh, silent authentication typically refers to a process where authentication is going to be happen automatically so probably what does mean so silent authentication is a process where authentication is going to be happen automatically so let's suppose this is your user machine pc right which having the gcc client installed and you have to authenticate when you are trying to connect with the G scalar PSC or the public service edge or the JN or GS cloud. So the first criteria to authenticate yourself. So there is a manual, there is a step by step authentication process which we'll understand in later stage. But initially, before accessing any of the services, <coughs> user must be authenticated. If user fail to authenticate, that not going to access any of the services while using the GA scaler, you know, cloud. So that is not going to process to access any of the destination. So that's why silence authentication typically refers to a process where user authenticate automatically without a need the explicit user interactions. Means you don't have to put your username and password. You don't have to do anything kind of the like login details, right? So this happen when this is going to often happen in this scenario where user has already been authenticated in first time and subsequent authentication request is going to be seamlessly handled without prompting the user credential to put their user details so you understand first so let's suppose my pc get authenticated first time right so i no need to put that credential again and again to just re-authenticate myself why should I regard if I am already authenticated? So my communication is going to be happen without re-authentication. And this is known as silent authentication. Right. So you don't have to, you know, put uh, again credentials once you get authenticated. So the silence authentication will only come in a picture. So <clears throat> when it comes to the silent authentication with identity provider, it usually involved the use of the authentication protocol that is known as the SAML. So they use the SAML, which is the most popular in the G scalar, which is the most recommended. So that SAML protocols, which is known as the security, right? Which is known as security assertion markup language. So this is the protocol SAML is abbreviated as the security assertion markup language. So this authentication is going to happen with the help of the identity provider and which is going to leverage the protocol that is a SAML or open ID connect. These are the protocol and that it is going to help to just do the sign on with the help of the SSO process. So one time authenticated the SSO is available that is going to be again and again <coughs> user validation is going to happen, right? So how the flow is going to happen? how the step-by-step -step flow is going to happen for this authentication. So the step-by-step -step flow is going to happen for this authentication. Let's suppose I'm the user. So the first step, user login is going to be required. 
means you just have to put your credential to first time to authenticate so you might be have to put your username right you might be have to put your password right then it's come to the second stage so second this state is going to happen as an authentication request so user login and then it is going to send the authentication request so what is going to happen in the authentication request so in the authentication request when user try to access any protected resource or the application means any any application any detail you want to access <coughs> with the help of the gscaler so gscaler may initiate the your authentication request to the idp and what is idp that is a identity provider and which which protocol they are going to leverage they are going to leverage that is a saml so this is how it is going to be happen and then after that your silent authentication come in a picture so initially you have to put everything to just validate yourself and then silent authentication come in a picture so in this silent authentication if user has already authenticated with the current session might be in this process in this two process in the first time you just put your credential and everything then your user has been authenticated and subsequently you want to access again right then valid session with the idp will be available and in that case silent authentication is going to be happen so this idp providers whatever the octa with the help of the saml is no necessary required the any kind of the reauthentication so what is going to do they are going to necessarily authenticate tokens or assertion of the g scalar without requiring the re enter their credentials means with the help of the tokens authentication tokens we having the auth tokens right plus we having the assertion so it is saml assertion right and with these two component they are going to authenticate re-authenticate the user without using the credential and then finally your access is going to be granted so your access is going to be granted right this is how it is going to happen so same thing we'll try to understand how it is going to happen in the this float diagram <clears throat> so you can see this is my one of the user and this user basically wanted to authenticate so what is going to be happen in the first step so in the first step let's suppose i'm the admin i'm the admin admin creates the device token at the client connector portal so basically <coughs> to authenticate you must have to create the tokens for the you know every devices which is going to be part of the gscaler so on the gcc client portal admin must create the device token so you know already the gscaler client connector portal can be used the saml as an identity provider with the help of the octa to facilitate the silent authentication into the client connector so how it is going to happen create the device token in the gscaler client connector portal so you just have to go in the gcc client connector portal and then you have the option i will show here in letter state administrator you just have to go in the administrator and then after you will find the option as the client connector idp so in this page right you need to you know copy the token value when when value for the use and we have to copy the token values for use when installing the client connector so whenever you want to install the client connector to just do the silently authentication there is a token available in the gcc portal in administration section in the client connector idp so create the device token you just have to create the device token and after creating this device token when you installing the you know your gcc client connector on the device you just have to copy the you know this particular token and this token currently is supporting the maximum eight so you can create up to eight tokens right so after getting the eight tokens right and admin need to just provide this all information in this particular your gcc client connector portal so admin enables the client connector portal as the idp option on the gia admin portal without uh, with option is the auto provisioning so in this case what is going to happen that before like you achieve this uh, second requirement what you have to do basically the administrator the administrator must use the add means that they have to add one of the gscaler client connector portal as idp 
the administration must add the gs clerk client control portal as idp option in the gia admin portal under the which section so you just have to go to the gia also and after going in the gia this time you have to go in the administration administration and after that after going in the administration you just have to go in the authentication setting authentic let me just rewrite it so i have to go in the authentication setting and then we'll see everything and then we have to here put the identity provider i then tt provider so you'll find this option provider and you just have to add the client connector portal as idtp option either with or without saml auto provisioning so both location you just have to this do this kind of the step so i'm just telling just we'll see while doing this lab environment when we'll try to correlate these steps in the second section but you just have to understand this all is going to happen so the administration must use the add the g scalar client connector portal as a idp option in the gi admin portal under the administration's authentication setting and then you just have to select the identity provider as a whatever the like saml you want to use or auto provisioning so that's why they are talking in the second step and then after you just have to move in the third steps so third op option is showing that right <clears throat> the client connector must install the client connector must install right with domain and the device token option either of them so either you just have to install with both option so then it is going to be work for you for silent authentication so the device client connector is installed with the domain as well as with the device token also and then they are going to do the silent authentication now after doing this right once this is installed with the domain and the device token the next step client connector capture user identity at the company uh, computer login means once the user is going to be login then user is going to be captured that information right so the client information user identity is going to capture at the first time once they put the username and credential because this is a core concept you just have to log in first time and then the information is going to be captured and based on the capturing those informations uh, they are going to do the silent authentication in the next step so if you'll see the information is captured so now the client connector authenticate to the gia service silently with the device token user identity in the previous stage when you install client connector you having the device token and the domains next step when the user login you just capturing the information from the users right and the finally when you have the token in user identity with the step four and stop three then in the fifth step you are just going to you know silently authenticate so how it is going to happen client connector then authenticate the user the client connector is authenticate the user g scalar identity provider that idp silently using by user identity while capturing the you know device login in this step when it is going to capture then by using this user identity and device token which is going to be used while that you know your gcc client provisioning so this is the two key component with the help of these two component device token and that is the identity provider the silent authentication is going to be happen and the user does not need to be respond to any client connector prompt or provide any password in order to enroll the new security or into the internet security services means if any services they want to access and all they don't require any kind of the additional information and all that is going to be happen silently that is going to be installed but the most important this all authentication process is just limited for the gia for user if you want to access the gpa service and you want to do the you know silent authentication this is not possible right so this is all about the silent authentication it's a very short topic next we are next we are going to do like discussion how the enrollment and processing provisioning flow is going to happen in the next lecture i'll step by step explain how it is going to happen for the this is a client connector enrollment and the provisioning flow but for time being we are happy with this silent, silent authentication process you guys can comment your query okay and reach out to us for any further clarification also 
every section which we are covering in the here as a theoretical part will show in the lab as well so you guys you guys see that how it is going to be you know correlated to each other okay so i wish you happy learning see you again in the next section next lecture happy